So if we are taking the derivative of x cubed with respect to x, that's just taking the derivative like we've been doing, okay? The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Uh, now, I am going to throw in an extra little piece just to get our minds in that mode. Um, so we took the derivative using the power rule, and then what is the derivative of x? Just x. 1, okay? Now, we never write that because it's just multiplying by 1. It doesn't change things, okay? Um, so that times 1 really doesn't affect anything. I'm just writing that so that it, it's, it's looking forward here, okay? It's looking forward. So the derivative of x cubed with respect to x is 3x squared, just like we've been used to doing. Now, what if I change that x to a y, but we're still taking the derivative with respect to x? Well, we still use the power rule, okay? We still take the derivative of that, 3y squared, times well, the derivative of y with respect to x. We can write that as dy over dx, okay? The derivative of y with respect to x. Or a lot of times uh, when we get into these problems, it's easier to use the prime notation, and just use the y prime instead of having to do the dy over dx, okay? Um, so the derivative with respect to x of y cubed is 3y squared times y prime. Okay? Now we can mix up our variables. We can do something like the derivative with respect to x of x plus 3y. So like I said, we're just taking the derivative as usual. So the derivative of x is 1. The derivative of 3y would be 3, but we took the derivative of a y variable with respect to x. So we have to multiply the derivative of 3 by y prime. Okay? Anytime you take the derivative of y, when you're differentiating with respect to x, you've got to throw a y prime in. Okay. Now the last example that I've got up here is the derivative with respect to x of xy squared. This is a product. Okay. All of our rules up to this point still apply. It's a product, so we have x and y squared are our terms. So the first times the derivative of the second. The derivative of y squared is 2y, but we took the derivative of y, so we also multiply it by y prime plus the derivative of x is 1 times the second. And there are several different ways that you could express this answer. Um, let's see here. We've got 2xy, y prime, plus y squared. It may be helpful to factor out the y. I would just look at my answer choices, see how those are expressed. Um, but I'm fine with just the 2xy, y prime, plus y squared. You don't have to factor out the y. I would just look at the answer choices for that. Okay? So same derivative rules of y. The only thing you have to remember is if you take the derivative of y, you've got to multiply by y prime. And then you take the derivative of y. Okay? Not every time a y shows up. Okay, the y squared doesn't have a y prime because I was not taking the derivative of y in that step. Okay? Questions so far? Okay, so here are some guidelines. Now, these are going to be on Haiku. You don't necessarily have to write them down right at this moment. I'm just going to talk, to, talk through them. The first step, and we tend to overlook this step, um, is that your life will be made easier if you can solve for y. Go ahead and solve for y, because it's easier to take the derivative if you can solve for y, you don't have to worry about it being mixed in. But you'll start to recognize, well, I can't solve for y there, so I'm just going to have to jump right into the implicit differentiation. Okay? You're going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. Sometimes after that point, you're going to have to uh, actually solve for dy over dx. Okay, you'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. Um, so, in general, I want to keep dy over dx on the left side and then move anything else to the right side of the equation. Uh, 
and you're going to factor a dy of dx out of the left side because we need to solve for a dy of dx by dividing by what you have left. Okay, now we haven't had to deal with that because we weren't differentiating equations in the last one, we were just differentiating expressions. We're going to look at um, an implicit equation here um, with the function y cubed plus y squared minus 5y minus x squared is equal to negative 4. Okay. Clearly, we cannot solve for y in this function because we've got y cubed, y squared, and y. We cannot completely isolate the y in this function. So to take the derivative of this, we're going to have to uh, use implicit differentiation. Okay. So I already mentioned we can't solve this one for y, so then we have to begin by taking the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So the derivative of y cubed with respect to x is 3y squared y prime. Okay. I'm going to wait until the end to deal with the dy over dx. I'll just replace the y prime with dy over dx. It's shorter hand notation to just use the y prime. Okay, the derivative of y squared is 2y, y prime. The derivative of minus 5y is minus 5, but I took the derivative of a y, so I've got to stick a y prime on it. The derivative of minus x squared is minus 2x. And this is where a lot of people, and I'll admit, even I do it sometimes too, when that constant is on the right side by itself, a lot of people forget that its derivative is zero. They want to just bring that constant down. Okay, don't forget that the derivative of a constant is zero. Okay, so that is step two. We took the, we differentiated both sides of the equation with respect to x. Now, step three, we want to keep or sometimes you have to move all terms that deal with the derivative on the left side. So that means this is going to stay, this is going to stay, and this is going to stay. That 2x needs to go to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to add 2x to both sides to move it to the other side. So we have 3y squared y prime plus 2y y prime minus 5y prime is equal to 2x. Now, in the future, once you get the hang of these, really you should be able to combine this step with the next step and do them at the same time so you don't have to recopy so much. Okay? Step four, factor the derivative of y with respect to x out of the left side of the equation. Notice all three of these terms have a y prime. So factor that out. So we've got y prime times 3y squared plus 2y minus 5 is equal to 2x. And then to isolate the y prime, all we have to do is divide by that uh, uh, the factor. Okay, Divide both sides by 3y squared plus 2y minus 5. So it cancels over there. So our final answer is dy over dx is equal to 2x over 3y squared plus 2y minus 5. That is the derivative of this implicitly defined function with respect to x. Now, we're not going to continue uh, with this problem, but a lot of times after this point, they may ask you to find a slope of the tangent line when x equals 1. Okay, well, you know x, but to find the slope, you've got to know y. So you need to go back to the original function. We'll do some examples of that. You've got to go back to the original function to find out what your y value is when x is a particular uh, number. But that's typically the questions that you're asked with this is write the equation of the tangent line or find the slope of the tangent line at a particular point. That's what you have to do with the implicit differentiation. Okay? All right, uh, let's do a couple more examples okay, before I turn the loose on these. Uh, here's one that has a few 
less y's in the equation, x squared minus 2y cubed plus 4y is equal to 2. A lot of times these implicitly defined functions are equal to a constant. Okay, a lot of times they are just equal to a constant. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of minus 2y cubed is minus 6y squared y prime. The derivative of 4y is plus 4. We took the derivative of a y, so we got to stick a y prime on it. And the derivative of a constant is 0. So I'm going to go ahead and combine these next two steps. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, and I'm going to factor out my y prime from the left side. So I've got y prime times negative 6y squared plus 4 is equal to negative 2x. And I'm going to divide both sides by the negative 6y squared plus 4. Now, this problem, they're going to do quite a bit of simplifying. Well, not a quite a bit, but like two things, okay? First of all, um, all three of those terms, the 2x, the 6y squared, and the 4, have a factor of 2 in common. So they're going to reduce all of those by a factor of 2. Remember, it's got to come out of all of them in order to be able to do it, okay? Uh, if that was not a plus 4, if that was a plus 5, we couldn't simplify that, okay? You could not just simplify the 2 of the 6. The other thing is, a lot of times, if you have rational expressions like this, and, the, and more than half of the terms are negative, they're going to factor out a negative, so it's going to change all the signs and this is what your answer is going, your answer choices are going to look like. Uh, your answer choice is going to be x over 3y squared minus 2. Okay, so if more than half the terms, in this case there are three terms, so if two out of the three are negative, then they're going to change all the signs. Okay, and they just do that by factoring out a negative and canceling. Um, but the easy way to look at it is that all the signs change, okay? So this is how your answer will appear. Okay, questions? Seems pretty simple, right? You just gotta remember those y primes and the derivative of the constant zero. Those are the most common, common mistakes. Okay, so, um,